Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at the EcoFlow River Pro portable power station again. This is the same power station I reviewed a few months back. This video will be the teardown to have a look inside and see how it's built that we didn't have enough time to complete the first time around. Alright, so the first thing I did was I discharged this almost the entire way. You can see I'm at 12% state of charge there, just to make it a little safer. So you can usually access these things through screws in the top, or sometimes there are screws under the rubber feet. Um, I see on the top here, it looks like these cover plates pop off. Yep, I see there are some Allen head screws under there. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out these screws. That is a long bolt. With all four of those removed, I see the handle comes off. And it looks like the top will come off as well. No wires, that's good. So here's the first look inside. This would be the inverter board that converts the DC power to AC. So I see on the AC side here, this is 14 AWG wire for the AC receptacle. And that is for the input. And then this pair of wires up here is 12 gauge or 12 AWG. And this is silicone insulated wire with a 200 degree Celsius rating. This is gonna be the main battery input from the battery that feeds the inverter board. And I can see that goes to an XT60 plug here. Kind of surprised they used black wire for both the positive and the negative. So on the back side for the receptacles, uh, it looks like this white and black lead is the AC output of the inverter. Uh, that is done with 18 gauge or 18 AWG wire. And this is AWM wire with a 105 degrees Celsius insulation rating. Alright, so what I really want to do is see if I can get this inverter board off and take a look at the battery inside. So I'm going to disconnect as many of these things as I can here. So I see this front display board here has a number of connectors. This first one on the left says 2 PSDR and that is going down to the inverter board. So I'll go ahead and remove that one. And this black one just says J3. It looks like that is providing DC power to the front, probably for the USB ports and power delivery ports. And then I have this rightmost connector here that says 2 BMS. So I imagine this is going down to the battery. Uh, but there are only four pins there, so perhaps that's a communications port, not a uh, direct BMS connection to the series pair cells. This little connector that says uh, CN9, not sure what that is either. Oh, that's going to the fan. All right, so this is the fan that is blowing air through the inverter heat sinks to cool it off. Uh, and it looks like it's blowing in the outward direction, so it's sucking cold air through. It's not blowing air inward. And I see one, two, three four Phillips screws. I'm hoping there is none underneath this uh, fan shroud here, but we'll see. And unfortunately, it does look like there is one under here, but I can reach it without disassembling it too much. So. Okay, so this, this board is separate from this fan here, so I also need to disconnect the fan. Okay, ah, one more connection down here. It's going to the button for the AC output. Go ahead and pull that out. Uh, so we'll just set this board aside and we'll come back to this later. So the front screen panel just lifts out. I don't see anything else holding it in. Let's try here. All right. So there are one, two, three, four screws holding down this plastic covering on the battery. Okay, and that plastic is also holding the fan. Uh, so here are the two positive and negative leads that come off the battery, the main positive and negative, and go into the BMS. And then here's the positive and negative that exit that would go up to the main inverter board or distribution board. And we see the small four pin connector here is a communications cable up to the main display board for the front. Uh, additionally, we have a six pin conductor here, which is going down to the remote port where you would connect the second or auxiliary battery. So it looks like there's a series of Phillips screws holding in a metal bracket on this battery. There are one, two, three, four, five, six screws. All right, so it looks like I can also lift out, yep, the AC uh, outlet panel for the AC output. It's a fairly simple panel. The receptacles are just soldered directly to this PCB or printed circuit board. Uh, and we also have the little push button switch to turn it on and off. We have another XT60 over here. Oh, I see how this works. I made a mistake there. So this lead here is actually the input from the auxiliary battery port. This is not from the battery bank below itself. So it must be getting power from the battery bank from these tabs that are soldered on here to the side. Uh, and it's likely using these tabs as well as the BMS. Let's see if we can pull this battery out. Now I'm keeping in mind that uh, even though this battery is discharged down to 12%, uh, 
Uh, this is all still live here, so I don't want to do anything that's going to cause a short circuit on this battery. Lift out the battery. And here you can see where the uh, expansion port is just coming in here, the positive and the negative. Uh, taking a closer look at this BMS here, uh, there's a button here that says switch one, which is kind of interesting. It's just a push button. I kind of want to push it and see what happens, but at the same time I don't want to push it because I don't know what it does. I've also got a small LED here that's blinking green. Uh, hopefully that's a good thing and it's not mad at me that I pulled out some of these connectors. So the negative from the expansion battery is connected directly to the negative that goes out to the inverter board. And then the positive comes in here and it looks like the positive is being connected to the positive going out through these MOSFETs. So I assume this is doing some sort of voltage sense to make sure you don't connect a high state of charge battery to a low state of charge battery causing a massive inrush of power through this auxiliary cable. Um, that's pretty smart and that's kind of what I expected to see. Uh, so up here we have two fuses. They appear to be 40 amp fuses each. They are wired in parallel. And we can see each series connection from the cells. This one's labeled zero down here. And we have number one, number two, number three, this one's four, and this one's also four with this thick metal bar here. So it's simply joining these together in parallel. Number five, number six, number seven's over here, and number eight. Additionally, there are two temperature sensors on this battery. We have one temperature sensor located right here, and there's a second temperature sensor located up at the top here. Uh, I do not see any shunts or anything like that to measure current flow. Um, I do not believe this to be a shunt here. It's labeled JP1, which usually means jumper. I don't believe this is a shunt. So other than that, I'm not really sure what else I'm looking at. I assume this is mostly the computer circuitry. So looking at the side here, we can see these are 18650 cells. I see GPHN, which is the brand name. I've never heard of that particular brand name, so I assume it's just your typical generic wrapped cells. The 18 denotes 18 millimeters wide, and the 25P denotes that they are 2500 milliamp hour cells. So I do see there are a number of screws holding this battery together. However, with some of these tabs being soldered to the circuit board here, I'm thinking this probably is not going to pull apart without unsoldering those tabs, and I don't want to mess with this too much because I need to put this back together so it still works. So I do want to get a look though and see how these cells are actually connected together. This may be adhesive that comes off. Let's see if we can get one of these off. And it looks like I need to take a break because my camera is overheating. All right, so while that was cooling off, I did get this corner loose here, so we'll see if we can pull this off. But it's pulling up the nickel at the same time. That is not good. All right, there we go, it's beautiful. It's always a lot of fun to me to see how these commercial batteries are built. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cells. So this is an 8S10P. Uh, so we have one, two, three, four groupings of cells on each side, that's eight, they're wired in series. And we have 10 cells here that are all wired in parallel. Uh, so what we have here is both a parallel and series connection. So this grouping of 10 here are wired in parallel. This grouping of 10 here are wired in parallel. And then these two groupings are wired in series. That's how they complete their series connections here. And you can see each uh, cell connection has two legs that come off and are then spot welded down to the individual cells. And I see four spot welds on each uh, cell, so two per tab here. Now the last time I did one of these teardowns, I noted that I thought this was a fused, a cell fuse connection here, a cell level fuse. I don't believe that to be the case anymore based on some viewer input and just looking at the overall size of these pads here. Uh, I don't believe this is sized such that it will burn out. Uh, so I'm fairly certain there is no cell level fusing on this battery. So then again, the strip that comes up here to the PCB is going to be the balance lead for this particular series connection. So the BMS can accurately determine how much voltage is in each individual grouping of cells. I do like how they have everything on this battery covered. With the exception of the BMS on the top, there is very little area on the sides where you can uh, make mistakes and accidentally short out. Um, this is nice thick plastic insulation they have. Uh, really all around this is insulated very well, so that's good to see. There's not really too much to see on the display board here. So this is the front display board. Uh, this is an XT30 that's feeding power into this board. Uh, we have the cigarette lighter or accessory port here. None of these components are really modular with the exception of this port. Everything is soldered directly onto the circuit board. 
We have the USB ports here in the front, the USB-C. Uh, these are our DC barrel jack outputs here. This is going to be the LED light in the front. And this very thin lead is labeled to screen. I believe that to be the power for the backlight of the LCD. And then you can see here where the ribbon cable attaches for the actual data. Uh, so back to the inverter board. Again, I'm not overly familiar with a lot of these components, so I'm just going to point out what I see and feel free to correct me if I say something wrong. I'm being very careful how I handle and touch this board because I don't know if these capacitors are charged. I don't believe they are, but uh, this entire board is conformally coated on the bottom, which means they have a layer over top just to prevent moisture from causing corrosion. So it's difficult to get an accurate reading as to whether or not there is any charge here. Uh, so this XT30 that comes in here, this is going to be for the solar charger. So this is probably the MPPT here, um, or some form of solar charge controller. I believe it to be an MPPT. I see two very large resistors here. So here we have the circuit breaker and we have, uh, this is on the hot lead or the black wire of the AC input. Um, these are the FETs down here that switch on and off to convert the DC to AC. So over here we have two smaller circuit boards that are standing vertically on the main inverter board. Uh, this one over here is labeled DC DC dash and a version number. So this must be some sort of DC to DC converter. Um, I don't know if that's stepping it down to 12 volts or what that is actually doing, but... And then over here there are a lot of little tiny components, some ICs, a lot of resistors and capacitors. I'm guessing this is the control circuit for the uh, inverter itself. There are also some small DIP switches here, so I'm wondering if uh, maybe that's how they control whether it's US or, you know, a foreign market where they have 50 versus 60 hertz or 120 versus 240 volts. Uh, just my personal guess. And there's nothing really overly exciting on the bottom. Again, you can see the conformal coating. It's all shiny just to keep moisture out from causing corrosion on the connections. And just for fun, here's all the hardware and components laid out. It is now time to put it back together and hopefully we can get it back together correctly such that it is still working. All right, so at this point I have everything connected except for the power input. So it's time to go ahead and plug it in. Hopefully nothing blows up. And there is a small spark, I'm guessing from the capacitors charging up. And it's turned on. So there you go. The overall build quality does appear to be pretty good. I typically focus around the wire sizes and types along with how the batteries are connected together. Uh, and I see no indication of problems or anything that may become a problem there. Either way, uh, here's the teardown. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Questions or comments, you can leave those as well. And thank you for watching.